Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg from Logic Pro Expert. And in this video, I want to look at two interesting ways to use the new Logic 10.5 feature for slip editing. Now, I've got two Apple loops loaded in here, Tuned Metal Beat 01 and a groove underneath. And I've got the Tuned Metal Beat EQ to bit to act as a topper. Now, the command I'm talking about, I'm going to open up the key command window, is slip right by nudge value and slip left by nudge value. And the default assignment is control option left arrow and control option right arrow. So what that means is we can slip the contents within the boundaries of this region. So what I'm going to do to start with is split this up into quarter note increments. I'm going to hit T to bring up my tool palette and then I to call it the scissor tool. And by holding down option, I can divide in equal increments, in this case, quarter notes. And I have quarter note slices. I'm going to double tap T to go back. Now, the whole premise of this is I can now slip the contents within each of these boundaries. Let me hide the browser and zoom a little bit. And we can see this a bit more closely. Now, I want to work with the nudge value here. And if you don't have this showing, you can go under view and go show toolbar. Mine says hide toolbar because it's showing, but if it's hidden, it'll say show toolbar. And if you're not seeing this nudge field here, you can customize it by right-clicking, go customize toolbar and make sure nudge value is enabled. So in this case, I'm setting my nudge value to eighth notes. So what that means is I can use the command to shift this an eighth note within the region. So here I'm going to shift this now left and you can see the contents changed. So let's hear what that sounds like. So I'm changing the rhythm. Let's try shifting a whole bunch of them. I'll go the other way, something like that. So I can change each one kind of randomly like that and get interesting variations here. I'm repeating the same kind of slice. It should sound interesting. It'll sound like there's a bit of a skip. So very smooth. I'll do this one in the other direction. Try something like that. And then this one, I'm just doing these kind of randomly. So there's a nice variation on that loop. Now, if you need to, you can also create crossfades between each of these boundaries. This loop happens to work nicely, but if not, let's go back to the key commands and I'm gonna type in crossfade. And here we see apply default crossfade control option X. So I can select any of these or all of them and just hit that command. And now I've got auto crossfades set with each region boundary. So in this case, it wasn't so necessary, but it could come in handy. And if you want to adjust that auto crossfade time, you can always go to your preferences in audio under editing. We have the default time that we set over here. Now, here's another scenario where slip editing can come in very handy in a corrective type of use. I'm going to start by recording a little live cowbell part. Okay, so let's lower that a bit and listen back. I'll loop this. Okay, so the timing isn't great. So what I can do is set my nudge value to something like a tick or a sample, but I'm going to go with tick for now. And let's see where they're off and we'll correct them. So that looks okay. And here I can see that this is early. So what I can do is I'm going to use the marquee tool and I have this set as my alternate tool, meaning that I just have to hold my command key to get it. And then I can just swipe across here and make a selection and click on it and it separates it. So now I can use that command and shift. Now I can see here one tick is not going to be enough. So I'm going to set this to maybe 10 ticks and I can move it like that. And now that looks pretty good. And we can go on and continue. That's really early as well. Marquee selection, click. And now I can line it up with the cursor that I have set at the beat. So you can quickly go through this without having to worry about flex time and slicing. That's pretty close. That's pretty good. That one is a little bit late. So let's shift that one 
actually, let me undo that and make a bigger marquee selection. And now let's shift that one the other way like that. That should be good. And this one, pretty good. I want to preserve some of the human feel. I'm just looking for the ones that are really off. That's a bit late. That's good. And then here, pretty good. That one's late. Now you can see how late it is when you zoom in. So I'm just going to make that marquee selection, click to separate and use the command now to nudge back. And then this one, it's a bit late also. So you can see how you can quickly go through like this and just isolate the hits and correct where you need to. That's fine. That's a little bit late. There we go. And I think that's the last hit. That's pretty good. That's fine. Close enough. Not bad. Let's say you want to preserve some of the feel. That's a little bit early. So let's maybe shift it like that. So now I can listen back to the whole thing and it'll sound pretty tight, but preserving the natural feel wherever possible. So that works nicely. And again, I can do the same crossfade tip or technique. It's not really necessary here because these are isolated, but let's say it was a rhythm guitar part and I was moving some little slices around. It was overlapping with some sustain from some other chords. The command for the crossfades will help perfectly. So control option X, there's little crossfades. Again, not that relevant here, but could be actually here. It could be relevant if there's some sustain from that cowbell. So there are two different ideas on how you can take advantage of the new 10.5 slip editing feature and the auto crossfade function. This is Eli Kranzberg for Logic Pro Expert.